Let's keep going. Why has been getting prickly on me eyes? Wait, what? Why has been getting prickly on me eyes? What? Why has been what? getting <laughs> prickly on me eyes? Butt kicking for goodness! Alright, so we're gonna be going over how to create a character in fifth edition uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So all you really need to get started is have a player's handbook. Whether it's a hard copy like this or an uh, online uh, digital PDF format that you can use on your laptop, uh, tablet, whatever it may be. Um, so just make sure you have those together. You don't even need dice. I'll put a link in the description as to where you can use like online auto rollers, things like that. But the big thing is to at least have a copy of this and uh, player sheets. Now one way you can get a player sheet is they always do print them in the back of these books here so if you can get out your hands on a Xerox photocopier you can just get that photocopied and that's an easy way to go as well but like I say I'll put a link in the description for uh, the online PDFs um, so other than so other than lots stand and deliver that my hamster might have a better look at you all right so first things first gonna be looking at the character sheets now this is the official character sheets provided by Wizards of the Coast you can get this uh, downloadable PDF from their main website um, but let's get started. So it is three pages. First pages is going to have the majority of stats and mechanics that we're going to be wanting to pay attention to. Second page is a little bit more of cosmetics. And third page uh, deals with um, maintaining and recording all your spells. Uh, universal for wizards, clerics, uh, warlocks, sorcerers, whatever you may be. Uh, so starting on the first page, let's get a little bit of a zoom in. Single page view. Thank you. Uh, so starting from the top, character name, class, level, race, alignment, background, experience points, player name. So pretty important information. Uh, next, on the, starting on the left-hand side, we're going to be going through our abilities. We'll be rolling separately for that and then figuring out the modifiers from there. Um, moving along to the right, you're going to be listing your proficiency bonus as well as saving throws and proficiencies. What skills are you actually proficient with and what, how do your ability modifiers apply to that? Over on the, uh, continuing in the middle, now we're looking at our armor class, initiative, and speed, as well as looking at total hit points, temporary hit points, and what our hit die is. Uh, the box underneath of here is where you actually list out your main equipment and what your attack bonuses are with that, and what is your damage, uh, as well as the type. Continuing down, we also have uh, our equipment loadout here, as well as the currency that we are currently carrying, CP for copper, silver, uh, e EP, I can't remember what EP is, I'm going to have to look that up, uh, GP for gold pieces, and then platinum pieces as well. Uh, we also have our passive uh, wisdom perception on the side, which I'll explain that a little bit later, as well as a box for uh, to write in uh, what profi other proficiencies we may have. Now the final side of this page going up talks about more of personality. Uh, this is, has a bit more to do with what background you choose. And honestly, this kind of part is a little bit more about just adding flavor of the role, how of what your character is gonna role play like, um, goals they may have. And then this final large box is used for more uh, features, abilities, and traits that your character uh, may have. So that's just a quick rundown of the, of the character sheet there. Um, let's get back into proper view. So like I say, we're going to be getting started with um, picking our uh, our race now. So let's go. Ah, uh, we are all heroes. You and Boo and I. Hamsters and rangers everywhere. Rejoice! <laughs> Okay, so now we're looking at the uh, player's handbook and what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be jumping to chapter two where we actually pick our race. Now this book does have a great step-by-step -step character creation guide, uh, makes it very easy. This book is laid out wonderfully as one of my favorite things about fifth edition. But like I say, we are gonna be jumping to chapter two which has all of the races listed and as I was mentioning earlier, we're gonna be doing creating a dwarf warrior. So let's scroll down. Uh, dwarf is the first race listed. Now, uh, how the book is laid out, they always have a little bit of an intro and uh, some information on the lore. So important stuff to read just so, to help with your role playing experience. But what we're really looking for is we're gonna be looking at dwarf traits. And any, no matter which race we look at or pick, there's always gonna be a sidebar uh, labeled as the traits. And that has all these bolded letters, which is really gonna help us focus and uh, get the information down that we need. But before we do that, let's get a name for our character. Now they have a nice little uh, list of examples for male and female names, as well as clan names. So let's just go for Adric. I like it. Adric, our dwarf warrior. Perfect. Now let's flip back. So now, like I say, the traits is the important bar that we're, we're wanting to pay attention to uh, no matter which race we go for. Your dwarf character has an assortment of inborn abilities, part and parcel of dwarven nature. 
So ability score increases, your constitution score increases by two. So we're gonna go back to our sheet and we're just gonna leave a note on that. I'm just gonna put a two and that's gonna remind me for when I actually roll out our uh, my abilities. Okay, let's keep going down the list. Age, so an age range of considered young, age of 50, on average live about 350 years. Whew, all right. Well, we don't want this guy to be too old. Now that's actually on the next page, so we can jump ahead. Might as well fill that in while we're looking at it. Let's just say this guy's at a youthful sprite age of 75. Okay, let's bounce back up. Moving along. Uh, alignment. Most dwarves are lawful, believing firmly in the benefits of well-ordered society. So we're going to stick with the lawful alignment just to kind of uh, stay within the, uh, <clears throat> I guess, within the kind of campaign universe. So we're just going to go lawful good. LG. Uh, let's see, do, 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 do. got the alignment, size, dwarves uh, stand between 4 and 5 it basically is considered a medium, which is what we need to, now, is there actually a spot for size on these papers? I don't think there is on this, on this form, actually. Height, weight, hair, so you got the height and everything, but I don't think there's actually a slot for size, but most characters are medium, I think. The only exception for a character that's actually small, I think, is Gnome and probably Goblin, some of the other monster races. Could be wrong on that, I might have to check it. So going over to speed, now this is an important one. Walking speed of 25, your speed is not reduced when wearing any heavy armor, yada yada yada. So we're going to be getting 25 on there, it basically lets us know how much movement we have per turn. Okay, now next thing, dark vision. Now dark vision is more of kind of a trait, so we're actually going to be listing on that, and it has a bit more of a description as to what this actually does for us. So this is going to give us, let us be able to see properly in lower light areas. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to be putting this on the sidebar here, which is, uh, as you can see, labeled features and traits. So let's get that on there. Dark vision. And sometimes I like to put a little page number just so if I need to look up more information while I'm playing, you just know, you know page 20, you can jump right to it and that's going to give us the info we need. Okay, so moving along, Dwarven res Resilience. You have advantage on saving throws against poisons and you have resistance against poison damage. Very nice. Dwarven Resilience. Let's get that on there. Again, that's going to fit under traits. Resil... Resilience. Yeah, you guys going to have to excuse my, uh, excuse my spelling here. I'm going to zoom it out just a touch. Okay, and let's keep on cooking. Okay, Dwarven Combat Training. You have proficiency with Battle Axe, Hand Axe, Throwing, up, ha uh, throwing Hammer, and Warhammer. So something to keep in mind, because we're going to be proficient with those weapons despite what class we uh, take. And again, I have a page 20 on the top, which is kind of covering uh, if I have to look any of this information up. Okay, moving along. We're cooking through. Tool proficiency. You gain proficiency with artisan tools of your choice. Smith tools, brewer supplies, or mason tools. All right, well, I cannot deny the brewer supplies. Uh, okay, great, moving along. And I'll explain a little bit more about what proficiency kind of represents later on. So right now, we're just get going through the traits, getting our ability and uh, getting our traits and abilities uh, written down. Stone cunning. Whenever you make an intelligence history check related to the origin of stonework, you are considered proficient in it. Very nice. And if you are proficient, you basically get to uh, double the prof proficiency check. So that's very nice. Okay, so let's get stone cunning on there. Now something like this, since it is kind of another, I could actually technically go under here. Same with the uh, Brewer Supplies proficiency. So what I might actually do is I'm gonna put Brewer Supply, I'll just put proficient just so I know that that's what it's re representing. And I'm gonna actually move these over to, oh no, I guess, you know what? They're technically traits. So yeah, we'll, we'll keep them over here. This is fine. Okay. That way everything's listed under page 20 there. Okay, moving along. Languages. You can speak and read common and dwarvish. Dwarvish is a full heart of dog. I've got all sounds. <laughs> okay, perfect. So we get common and dwarvish. No problem. So we're going to be listing that under other proficiencies in language. Common and dwarvish. Okay, great. Okay, uh, okay, all right, back to it. So now that we've got our languages down, last thing for our uh, racial selection, uh, racial selection, sorry, is to pick our sub race. Many of the races in the player's handbook do have a sub race. And for the dwarves, we have a choice between two. We have a hill dwarf as well as the mountain dwarf. Now, again, it's important just to take a look at what's in bold. Uh, I mean, obviously read the paragraph, read the lore, but when it comes to creating the character, we're really trying to focus on things that are written in bold. 
So right away, most sub races are gonna adjust your ability scores. Hill Dwarfs, your wisdom score is gonna increase by one, while as a Mountain Dwarf, you're gonna actually get a two, an increase to two on your uh, to strength, which is really nice. So as well as uh, Hill Dwarfs have Dwarven Toughness, which is gonna bump up your max HP. Dwarven Armor Training lets you be proficient in light and medium armor, armor despite your class. So we're gonna go for Mountain Dwarf just because we get that sweet little uh, two to your strength. So right away, let's move over to our character sheet. As with the constitution, how we've added the two to it, let's add two to strength so we don't forget when we roll our abilities. Uh, next thing we're gonna be adding is the Dwarven Armor Training. So let's write that in there. Uh, we'll put it on this side for now. Okay, perfect. So that should do it for our race selection. Um, anything else to go over? No, like I say, the big thing is to focus on the traits, go through the bold letters, write, just reading through everything and getting everything that you need written on there and should be good to go. So now we can move on to class selection. Boo must have his exercise, lest he bite us all in hard to reach places. Okay, so now we're going to be moving on to picking our class, which is in Chapter 3 of the Player's Handbook. And we've jumped right ahead to the fighter, as we're going to be picking that for our dwarf. Now, uh, despite what class you're picking, they always put a nice little table out right in front. And this is a real good guide to knowing what your proficiency bonus is, at what level, as well as what features you should have at this point. So it makes it nice and easy. So looking at level 1, we should have a proficiency bonus of plus 2, and features of fighting style, as well as second wind. So right now, let's bump back into our character sheet. We're going to put our proficiency bonus in there, which is in the top left corner. And I'll explain a little bit more about proficiency in a moment. Now features, we have fighting style and second wind, and those are described a little bit later on in the uh, fighter section here. But just like in the uh, race selection, how they have the race traits, uh, picking your class, they're going to have a section called class features. Now, as always, they start off with a bunch of lore, what your role as a fighter is going to entail, and a few other uh, bit of information like that. But we're going to be jumping right ahead to the class features. So let's get a bit of a zoom in here. Do, do, do. All right, looking at class features, starting at hit points, hit dice. Uh, so it's 1d10 per fighter level. So let's get our hit dice written in there. Hit dice in the middle, d10. We're just going to put that in there for now. Uh, hit points at first level is 10 plus your constitution modifier, so let's just put in 10 for now so we can keep that in mind as once we roll our ability modifiers on the left hand side here, we'll be able to apply that to our total health and get that figured out. Now we're moving down to proficiencies. Up uh, Now we have, being a fighter, that we have proficiency in all armors and shields, so that makes it nice and easy. We'll type that in there, go to our proficiency side here. All armor shields might be a little bit redundant writing in proficiency since that's what it what this uh, box labels but uh, it's just kind of how I work and again you could put page 71 if, you, if there's anything you need to list out to uh, remember um, or to look up later uh, now proficiencies and weapons being again being a fighter we have proficiency in simple and martial weapons so majority of all of them but not quite let's so oh, let's get that listed proficiency simple Okay, perfect. Next, moving along. Like I say, we're looking at the class features and then keeping with the bold. Uh, now we also have proficiencies. So none in tools. Being a fighter, we're not very, not very, uh, don't have a lot of artisan skills. But moving over to, but we did get some selection being uh, from our racial selection. Uh, so our next thing is the saving throws. We have a proficiency in saving throws of strength as well as constitution. So let's get those labeled. Our saving throws are listed right on the side here. So all we're gonna do is gonna check the bullet next to that. So it was strength and constitution. And that just indicates that we get to apply our proficiency bonus anytime we're rolling any of these stats. And we're gonna be filling these in later. Okay, so we're moving on to the next page. Going down the list, skills. Choose two skills from acrobatics, animal handling, athletics, history, insight, intimidation, perception, and survival. Very cool. So that out of this list, we get to pick two that is gonna allow us to apply our proficiency bonus when we roll for it. So let's, um, how should we try and lean this character over? Some, sometimes this stuff is nice to select when you actually roll your uh, abilities, but we're, we're gonna be doing that after selection. So let's just go with athletics to be boring. That's a strength roll. And then, ah, oh, what the hell, let's go with animal hand handling. There we go, which is a wisdom roll. So might be trying to lean this, this fighter to have a little bit more of a wisdom stat, which can help out in per things like perception checks, which is great for any character. Okay, so that takes care of the uh, the class features. 
Next, we're going to be moving down to fighting style, because as you can see in the uh, table that we had uh, for the fighter, level one features, we have a fighting style as well as second win, and that's it. So we've gone through all of the class features, that's what you need to do, but now we're just going to be looking up fighting style, second wind, and applying those. So fighting style, you adopt a particular style of fighting as your speciality, choose one of the following options. You can't take a fighting style option more than once, even if you later get to choose again. So we're gonna have a little bit of a list of how we, what type of fighting style we want. And as you can see underneath, there's the ability second wind, which we'll be adding as well. And then from there on, it moves on to higher level stuff, which we're not gonna be worrying about for now. So they always, so the abilities, they always kind of keep almost as like a kind of, you know, what level you are, so you don't have to go too far ahead. Um, so again, looking at fighting styles, we have things like archery, plus two to range attack, defense while you're wearing armor, plus one to AC, dueling, great weapon fighting, protection, so all sorts of different different kind of neat uh, features to add. So for fighting style, we're just going to keep it simple. I'm going to go with defense. While you're wearing armor, gain a plus one bonus to AC. So that's something I'm going to have to keep in mind when I'm rolling out my armor class uh, stats. So, so let's put that in here though. Now some of these proficiencies, I'm actually going to kick over to my proficiency slot. Especially things that aren't really so much of an ability, just something more that I'm proficient in. We're going to get brew supplies over there as well. And that should be fine for now, just to clean this up a little bit. Because I want to have a little bit of extra space just to specifically for my abilities. So fighting styles, defense. So let's type that in there. Do, 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 do. Fighting round the world, fighting style, defense. So that's going to add a plus one to my AC. So like I said, I'm going to have to keep that in mind when I roll that out. Okay, so like I say, uh, next thing is the second wind as listed on the table for first level. You have a limited well of stamina that you can draw on to protect yourself from harm on your turn. You can choose a bonus action to regain hit points equal to 1d10 plus your fighter level. Once you use this feature, you must finish a short or long rest before you can use it again. Very nice. So we'll type that in here as well, second wind. And again, I'm going to put the page number for this just in case if I have to look this up again later. This is page 72 of the player's handbook. So I'm going to type that in here. And if you're feeling up for it, you can even just type out the descriptor right in here so, so you have it right away. But I kind of like having the page numbers for myself. Okay, so that should take care of everything for our class selection. Now there are things like subclasses, but those a lot of those are actually picked at level 3. And so if we look at what the level 2 for the fighter is, we get our action surge and that's about it. And that is kind of the next one ahead on the chart. So that should take care of everything for uh, our class selection. So now we get to move on to actually roll for our abilities. Evil, meet my sword. Sword, meet evil. So before we move on to um, our ability rolls, we're actually going to be going over equipment, which I glazed over. So equipment always always dictated by um, what class you pick, as well as your background rolls, and it's right in between the class features. So equipment right on the side there, which I glossed over. Okay. Uh, you start with the following equipment, into the, in addition to equipment granted, oh god, excuse me, by your background. So we have a choice between the A and the B. We can choose either a chainmail or leather armor, longbow, and 20 arrows. So kind of letting us choose if we want to go in tanky or if we want to try and be kind of a light and nimble fighter. Um, oh, did I move that already? Yes, I did. Let's get that back in there. So I've already kind of decided I am going to be going with the chainmail. So let's actually just put that right in the equipment. And I'm going to be looking up information on the chainmail in a moment here. Did I spell that wrong? Chainmail? That should be right. Oh, it's, it's two words. Okay. So we got the chainmail. Next one, we get to choose between a martial weapon and a shield or two martial weapons. So like I said, I've already kind of decided I do want to go for a longsword. I'll put the shield in there as well. Like I said, we'll be looking up stats in, on that in a moment. Uh, next thing, a light crossbow and 20 bolts or two hand axes. Well, it never hurts to have a ranged uh, backup weapon. So crossbow plus 20 bolts okay uh like yeah, yeah and a dungeoneer's pack or an explorer's pack i will go for the explorer's pack what the hey okay so now that we have that information listed out let's actually go over to the equipment page to get a little bit more uh to get our stats on the gear that we've chosen so 
Don't mind me. Da, 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 da. Equipment. Here we go. Again, another chapter to be familiar with as uh, there's a lot of different individual stats and uh, little kind of perks and, uh, and uh, changes uh, that are that you'd want to read through. As Now, when it comes to armor, one of the big things is that the type of armor you're using is going to dictate um, whether you can apply uh, dexterity bonuses to your AC, which can be very important for certain characters. So this is the armor listing here. We are looking for chainmail. So it starts with light, medium, heavy, shield. We're looking at heavy armor as that's what chainmail does fit under. It has a total cost of 75 gold pieces. The AC, which is what we're really looking for, is 16. Now a couple of other things to know is you do need to have a minimum strength ability of 13 and you do have a disadvantage on stealth checks. Now another thing to note about heavy armor, which is what we're looking at here, heavy armor, of all armor categories, heavy armor offers the best protection. These suits of armor cover the entire body and are designed to stop a wide range of attacks. Only proficient warriors can manage their weight and bulk. Heavy armor doesn't let you add your dexterity modifier to your armor class, but it doesn't penalize you uh, if your dex modifier is negative. So that's something to keep in mind is a lot of the time you, when you add your AC, you do add your dexterity modifier, which we have yet to determine. But since we are wearing a heavy armor, we're not gonna be able to apply that. So let's bounce over to our chainmail. Let's just type in what the base AC is for it, AC 16. And I'm actually gonna apply that up the top since we know now know what our base AC is. You can, now, uh, there are some classes that don't wear armor. Uh, so you're gonna be using basically strictly your dexterity bonus and maybe any other proficiencies you may have with that. But uh, for being a fighter, our base AC is starting with um, uh, the type of armor that we're using. Okay, so that takes care of the chainmail. Next thing, let's look up the long sword back into the chat I believe this is chapter five now we're looking at weapons so scrolling down we're looking for the chart here we go weapons so it did say that we can pick one martial weapon as well as the shield um, and before I pass through the armor I should look at the shield stats so shield now shields seem to be kind of a general uh, blanket statement in um, d and fifth edition however there is obviously magic shields out there that are going to kind of change things up a bit but for a base armor class of any shield it looks like it is a plus two so not too shabby at all now I'm going to leave shield labeled as just shield and not plus two because if I added a plus two onto the shield title that would indicate that this is actually a magic shield uh, be, which would equal out to a shield uh, of plus four. So we're just going to leave it titled as shield but we know that it is a plus two so let's add that on there and that's going to give us a total of 18. Perfect. So what we have considered in our armor class so far is our chainmail at 16 and then our adding our shield on there. So now let's continue back to the weapons. We're looking at martial. Martial weapons. Let's scroll down looking for longsword. Great. So as we can see the damage is 1d8 slashing. It also has, this is an important area to kind of look at, is properties, because there's all sorts of different properties that can dictate whether you're going to be rolling your attacks with, say, dexterity, if, if you want, uh, other things like that. Now, Longsword we, is a versatile, which means that we can't, and that is labeled in the description up ahead here, which basically means our character can use this weapon with two hands to change the damage dice to a 1d10. So uh, since my character mostly is using a shield, it's, I'm basically going to be using my sword one-handed for the most part. But let's put in the 1d8 uh, so we know there. Okay, so that should take care of that. Now since now since I have my uh, damage stats on that long sword, let's enter it since that is going to be what I mainly have equipped. Long sword. Attack bonuses we don't have figured out yet, but we can't put our damaged uh, and type. And I'll put slap, SL for slashing. Okay, great. Um, that should, now you can look up other things like the adventuring gear, like what is the in the explorer's pack, what is the dungeoneer's pack to see what you would uh, like to have for your character. But that should do it for all we need to do for um, items right now, kind of our base stuff. So now we are ready to roll, move on to uh, rolling our abilities. Make way, evil! I'm armed to the teeth and pecking a hamster! All right, so now we've moved on to rolling our abilities. And now, just a reminder, there is a description of this in the player's guide back on the step-by-step -step character creation that explains nicely how to apply ability modifiers. But basically, or to um, how to determine, I'm sorry, your ability scores, I should say. But how you really do this is we're gonna be rolling four D6 for each stat, and there are six stats. So basically, you're gonna be rolling four D6 six times. So you can go to Google, and if you type in D20, that is gonna give you um, a set of dice that you can use. So if you don't have dice on hand, you can just do uh, Google simple um, uh, 
little dice little dice program they have here. So we're going to do 4d6. 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. So here's our four, first roll. Nothing too shabby or nothing too good, but what we're going to be doing is taking the three highest numbers of these four dice to get our first number. So what do we got? We got a 5 and a, and a 4, so that's 9, plus the 3 is going to make 12. Okay, so let's re-roll. Come on, big money, big money, big money. Eh, not great. So 12 again, so the 5, 5, and the 2. And so I am just jotting this on the side. You are just supposed to jot this on a scrap piece of paper because what you're going to be doing is taking these numbers and applying them to what abilities you want later on. Roll again, third number. Okay, so three, six, 11, not great. Next, number four. Okay, so 14. Again, nothing too sexy so far. Roll number five. Okay, this is a little better. This is what I'm looking for. So 6 and 6 is 12, plus the 4 is going to give us a 16. So we finally have a decent number. Let's roll again. Last one. Oh, God. Come on, big money, big money, big money. All right, not bad. So we're going to be having another 16 there. Great. That's what we wanted. Okay. So now that we got our numbers written down on the side, we actually get to pick uh, wh how we want to apply them. So, like I was saying, we got our six numbers, and we're basically going to be picking which abilities we want to put them in. Now, as a reminder, we do have some of the racial bonuses, which added uh, two to our strength, as well as two to our constitution. So that kind of gives you an opportunity to use maybe one of the lower numbers to help and kind of bump that up, while being able to spell out your higher numbers uh, across. But we're going to be taking our 16 and trying to focus as one of the best fighters that we can. So let's put our 16 into strength, which is going to give us a total of 18, adding the two. And we're going to put our other 16 into constitution, which is going to give us a total of 18 again. Again. So I'm just going to put a little mark just to indicate that I've used those again if, if for whatever reason I change my mind on something. Alright, next stats. So our next highest number is the 14. Now dexterity usually is a good one to go to, especially for AC bonuses, if you're attacking with a finesse weapon or doing anything ranged. Um, but like I was saying, I was trying, I was kind of leaning this character a little bit towards wisdom for some reason, so let's put the 14 in there. I think it was because of the animal, animal handling check. And it's not never a bad idea for perception checks as well. Okay, uh, so now we have a 12, 12, and 11. So let's put the, let's, we at least got to put the 12. You know, 14 not putting into the dexterity kind of goes against the grain for me, but now we're making things a little different here. So we put the 12 there. Let's put the other 12 in charisma. And the last number is going to go into intelligence. Okay, so, so that should be all sorted. So I can clear this out now since we have everything labeled. Now the next thing is to take your ability score and turn that into an ability modifier. Now so I think you're supposed to actually put the modifier in the big box, but I'm kind of old school, I like seeing the score. Now how you get the score, and again this is all explained in the, um, there is a nice table in the player's handbook, actually we should look that up before I do the math for you. Let's take a look. Do, do, do. So this is kind of this page is looking more at the actual ability scores and what they translate over to. Let's zoom in and get a nice little table ability score modifiers right here. So you look at your score. We're rolling lots of 14s, 16s, 10s, 11s, and then this is what your actual modifier is going to be on the side. So you can do it that way, listed in the book. Uh, another quick way of doing it is that it is all you do for math wise is that it is um, you take minus 10 and then divide by two. So strength of 18, we're going to subtract 10, leaves at eight, and divide by two, which is going to give us a plus four for a modifier nice dexterity same thing minus um minus 10 divided by two which goes in once we're gonna have a plus one constitution plus four intelligence which is going to be zero since uh minusing 10 leaves us one and uh can't divide by two so we got nothing for an, uh, a modifier wisdom we're gonna have our plus two so not too bad charisma we're gonna have our plus one and while we're going down the list, we might as well put our passive perception in. Now, I'm pretty sure off the top of my head, passive perception is, is added just by taking a 10 and then whatever your modifier is. So it can be into a negative if your wisdom is a negative. But we have a plus two on the ability modifier. So our passive perception is going to be a total of 12. Okay, that takes care of that. So now that we have our modifiers, we can actually apply them to our proficiencies and our saving throw. And just for the sake of it, I'm only going to fill in the ones that we have a proficiency with just to save a little bit of time. So looking at strength, that's obvious. Plus four, <laughs> going to be applying. And you can go down the list and they add the other ones if you want. Oh, what the hell? We'll do it for the saving throw since there's not a ton. So we got a plus one. Constitution is again the plus four. 
Intel is zero, so no bonus on that. Wisdom, I believe, was, yep, yeah, plus two, and then what was charisma? Uh, plus one. Now, just a reminder, the bullets that we checked off earlier is when is al going to allow us to apply our proficiency bonus. So we're going to have a pl say if we have to roll a strength check for whatever reason, we're lifting something uh, or something like that. We're going to be rolling a pl with a plus four as well as the plus two proficiency bonus. So you can see how as you level up, the proficiency bonus is going to increase, uh, making your character that, that much better and more powerful and dope. Okay, let's scroll back down. Wisdom handling. So I have a plus two on wisdom, or sorry, wisdom handling, animal handling. And then athletics, we're going to be adding our plus four. There we go. Okay, keeps that pretty simple. Good, good, good. So that takes care of our ability scores. And actually, now that we have our ability scores, we can finish up and we can do our uh, max hit points. So as as we uh, as we were told, our the fighters. Uh, hit points is the max d10, so it's 10 plus whatever your constitution modifier is, which is a floor, 4, so our total is going to be 14. And we'll put that up in the total slot as well. And we start with 1 d10, and we start with 1 hit die per level. Okay, perfect. So now that we have our ability as well, we can actually figure out what our attack bonus is going to be for our longsword. Now, for make, for what the attack, it's going to be our, since it is a melee and it's not with a finesse weapon, it is going to be a strength based. So it's going to be our plus four. And since we are proficient in longsword, we're going to be applying our proficiency as bonus as well, giving us a total of plus six. Now, um... <coughs> When you roll your damage rolls, you're always you're always going to have whatever your strength modifier is. So I'm going to leave the damage type just straight at 1d8, knowing that I'm going to be applying my plus 4 whenever I do any damage. And I'm going to leave it for a plus 1 if I do pick up like a magic sword or something like that. So I'm going to leave it at that there. Okay, uh, other thing is that we are equipped with our shield as well. So we can now, now that we have uh, all of our abilities maxed up, figured out, we should be able to do our armor class. So again, since we are wearing chainmail, the dexterity actually, or the heavy armor, isn't going to be applying, so we didn't need to wait for that. But we can figure it out now. So chainmail is going to give us the AC of 16 plus a shield, and we saw that shields are plus two. And the only other thing is the fighting style, which is defense that I chose earlier, and that gives us a plus one to AC while wearing armor, making for a total of 19. Okay. Now the last thing uh, that we can figure out since we do have our ability modifiers is our initiative. Now initiative is always determined uh, with our dexterity. So we, all we get is a nice little plus one to initiative, better than nothing. Okay. So that should do it for our ability modifiers. Um, I believe the next thing for us to take a look at is the background, which is gonna let us choose uh, further proficiencies. A den of stinking evil. Cover your nose, boo. We will leave no crevice untouched! Alright, so now we're moving on to selecting our background, which is almost wrapping up the uh, the character creation. Now, background um, is kind of a neat addition to 5th uh, edition D&D, as what it really does is it helps to add kind of flavor, characters, purpose, goals, uh, flaws to your character. Um, if you're not too good at, you know, if, if you want to have something that's a little bit more provided for you. And I honestly like this system. I think it's a neat idea. But the big thing that we're going to be taking away is selecting a background is going to give us more choices in proficiencies and things like languages. So it is an important th thing to draw. Uh, now, there is also descriptions, depending, depending on what your race is, on things like height, weight, so further just kind of more cosmetic and aesthetic color to your character. Um, also a description on alignment by the looks of it, which is good, languages, yada yada yada. But what we're really looking for is the background here. So there's all sorts of different backgrounds, like you can look at the list, there's acolytes, what else do we got, criminal, uh, entertainer, yeah, also all sorts of different stuff, hermit, so trying to find something as what, that describes your character a little bit better is, um, is going to be helpful. Uh, to, to add a little bit of color. Uh, for now, let's just I'm just gonna go with criminal. I'm gonna make my fighter has a criminal past. So let's zoom in and take a look. You're an experienced criminal with a history of breaking the law. You have spent a lot of time among other criminals and still have contacts within the criminal underworld. You're far closer uh, than most people to the world of murder, theft, and violence uh, that pervades the underbelly of civilization. You have survived up to this point by flouting the rules and regulations of society. So again, we're gonna be looking basically at the bold letters or bolded words. Skill proficiencies, we have a proficiency in deception and stealth. So let's bump over here. So now now criminal probably isn't the best selection for my character because I didn't put a lot of 
focus on dexterity. I did put it towards a little bit more wisdom, but just for the sake of the character, creating the character, I'm gonna be doing that. So I'm, I'm getting uh, a, a proficiency bonuses on deception, which is actually a uh, charisma uh, ability, and then as well as stealth, I believe it said. So stealth, uh, never a bad thing to have for any D&D character, even if you aren't like a rogue or a ranger, because there are quite a few moments, even if you are a wizard or a fighter, that you need to stealth out, out somewhere. Next thing, we're going to be moving down to tool proficiency. One type of gaming set, and then thieves tool. So you can look up a gaming set as to what you want to be proficient in later, but so for now, I'm just going to put proficient in a gaming set. You can kind of be determined by what campaign setting you're in. And then another, the other thing was proficiency in thieves tools. Now, it's a little bit redundant for me to just type proficiency on the side, as because we know that we are assuming that these are proficient. Just kind of a habit of mine. Okay. Now, uh, now there are, let's see, there are many kernel. Yeah, so, so again, these are, these little section here, special, criminal speciality, these would actually be kind of cool. Uh, there are many type of criminals. Do I have that open still? No, I don't. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that alone for now because the majority of that section is just to further, like I say, kind of add color to your character. What are their flaws? What are, again, what are their ideals? Things that are going to help kind of dictate how that character would actually role play in the world. So, and you can even randomly roll. You can see that they have a D6 and a 1 to 6 section on there. So it's kind of a neat way if you don't want to, you know, have to come up with this on your, for yourself. You can just roll it and it's there. Great way to make an NPC as well. I'm a big fan of the background system. But for now, like I say, I'm just applying the main bonuses that we get from that just to help our character buff up a little bit. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're almost done with our character creation. We've basically we've gone through the most important stuff, which is picking your race, picking your class, rolling your ability modifiers, and selecting your background, and getting some of your equipment organized. So that's kind of the meat and potatoes of creating a D&D character. We still do have a few things to fill out, so let's zoom in here. So add your class and level. So he is a fighter. Okay. Background, we pick criminal. Crim. Criminal. Player name, Nerps. Race, and I believe I picked Hill uh, Mountain Dwarf. Dwarf, and then let me just put that kind of Mooten. We did get our alignment on there, and experience points is currently at zip. Perfect. Okay, and then on the other side, now on the other page, again, it's just more of skin color, eye color, height, hair, weight. Those are all kind of cosmetic things that can be figured out as well as uh, more personal background information on the second page. And as I was showing before, the third page is more to do with uh, your actual spell casting. And being a fighter, we don't have um, anything to worry about in terms of spell casting ability, spell save DC, and spell attack bonus, which are pretty easy to figure out. But uh, I'll, I might save that for another video when creating, say, like a wizard or something. So this was just a, a quick rundown on how to make a D&D character. And the example we used was a dwarf fighter. So if you're new to making characters, sometimes creating a fighter is a, is a good foundation to go with because you don't have to worry, well, for one thing, you don't have to worry too much about uh, getting your spell, spell slots organized. You can just kind of focus on getting what your attack bonuses are going to be, what are the proficiencies. It's, it's kind of a good way to start and one that I would recommend with. So other than that, I think everything should be correct here. Um, man, please leave any comments if, the, if you do have anything or if there's any corrections or something that I did wrong or something that I explained uh, a little confusing. I did, I did want to try and keep this video as short as possible. Um, but yeah, not bad, not bad ability rolls. I mean, they're okay. I had better ones on the previous, but that's how she goes. So anyways, I hope that was helpful. Check out the rest of my channel. Uh, man, if you like the D&D content, please let me know. It's a big, I'm a big fan of this stuff. I love doing this kind of uh, content and hoping to do more along with the video game stuff. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for him. It looks pretty good. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Like, it's, like I keep saying, you know, the best way to get familiar with this is to spend the time reading the book, going through the, uh, the simple setup that they lay out for you. And uh, like I always say, you know, my favorite thing with 5th edition is just how well laid out the book is and how easy it is to get started and actually create a character. Um, so other things to consider that if you're looking for more uh, race options, more class options. There are other books out there. Uh, Volo's Guide to Monsters is a great one if you're looking for more uh, race options, even including monster races, all sorts of really interesting races to be able to pick through here. And then if you're looking for, when you kind of get to that, um, oh, there's classes that, that get to ch choose this at level one, but a lot of level three classes, you do get to pick 
into a uh, subclass and that is greatly expanded in Xanathar's Guide to Everything. So those are good books to keep an eye after if you want to have a few more uh, class and racial options. But otherwise, like I say, best thing to do is spend the time, read through the book, and you'll get yourself very familiar with it pretty quick. Uh, Wizards of the Coast have done a great job of uh, just getting everything nicely laid out and 5th edition I'm a huge fan of. So like I say, hope that's helpful. Check out the rest of my channel. Uh, if you like the content, like it, subscribe. Thanks for watching guys, take care.